Okay. We're going to talk about our top tips for traveling with kids. Jen is very experienced at road tripping with kids. Mm. I'm pretty experienced at flying with kids. So we're going to talk about that before we jump in and have more of our Dal Vineyards wine. If you are watching us on YouTube, please be sure to find us on your favorite podcast platform and like, rate, review, follow all the things. Just, you know, wherever you get your podcasts. And then if you are listening on a podcast platform, if you would go check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash hi, my name is mom. And we're on socials at hi, my name is mom official. You want to talk about traveling with kids? I'd rather talk about traveling without kids, but we're talking about traveling with kids. How about if we Let's talk about traveling with kids while we think about planning a trip without kids? Sounds good to me. Okay, cheers to that. This is Hi, My Name is Mom, a podcast about motherhood. Here are your hosts, Jen, Corey, and Kayla. Well, here we are on the eve of yet another spring break. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually really excited. I hate I love days off. I love snow days. I love holidays. I love teacher work days. I love all of it because I really dislike the structure of up at 555 a.m. on the bus or out the door at 645 a.m. You know, it's like I I don't like that. I do like having kid free time to do stuff, but I hate the the, the routine of it all, the routine of it all. That's why I, look I do feel rushed a yeah, lot. I do, too. I hate feeling rushed. And I feel rushed almost always in life with three kids right now. And I feel a little bit like my friends at homeschool, and I have lots of friends at homeschool. I always have. But post-pandemic, I feel like there's even more. Yeah. And there's part of me that's like really, really jealous of the freedom that that lifestyle yields you. You want to do swim lessons at 10 o'clock on Mondays? Great. I... I don't know. Love the structure that school provides. I and I sometimes have to rally myself to go, okay, they're going to be out of school for three weeks. What am I doing? school sessions. But then I, I have to this? remind myself that I can enjoy it because what I do love is on weekends, no one has to be anywhere. We can wake up, watch cartoons, lay mm-hmm. around, um, take our time with things. But then I feel like once I am three to four hours in, on my day with three children and they're all starting to go a little stir crazy Mm -hmm. and you have to figure out what to do. That becomes tricky. So actually speaking of spring break, I haven't made a plan for my kids and we oftentimes don't make plans during spring break. We don't either. Really? I feel like you're better at planning than I I am. I guess I should rephrase that. We typically do not do vacations during spring break. Yeah. I would rather take my kids out of school. I mean, I really don't care. I'd rather take them out of school at a random time and go on a trip when it's not like peak travel time. Do you guys have a certain number of absences that they can't go? Because we you technically do, we but technically I don't think. We have like a Tennessee law. And the thing yeah. is, you're, I, this is like a whole other conversation because I don't know if you remember Mason, the year that we first moved here, Mason was in kindergarten. Adrian was working like morning radio with Ty. So right. he was up. I was doing all of like morning by myself, which was not a big deal. A lot of people do. Yeah. However, I also had like a one year old and I was suffering from like postpartum hypertension. So I was yeah. getting these chronic debilitating migraines and my kids were late to school. Well, they weren't actually late to school very often. They're late to school twice in the first two months. And by late, I mean like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And the other times I just, I take my kids out of school for travel. I believe that like most of the education you get in your life happens outside the confines of four walls of a classroom. Yeah. And anyone who disagrees with me, I, I totally think you're crazy. Like that's just my <laughs> parent. Judgment. I literally told an assistant principal this last week. I was like, you don't know me very well, but you're crazy if you believe anything else. And he's like, I have to say, I completely agree with you. And I was like, well, I go. know. <laughs> so the reality for me is like, I don't care. If they miss school. Now I have gotten, my daughter came home recently and she's like, mom, I've missed 20 days of school. She has? No, you haven't. I was like, you missed like that many days days of school, eight days of school max. And that includes like holiday travel, right? They are counting any day where you leave 30 minutes early or arrive an hour late because of an orthodontist appointment. And she has one of those a month and they're only during school hours, right? So they count those as a day, even though it's an that's hour. Weird. So they like, di- so she's super frustrated. She's like, you know what? I don't care. And I was like, that's a great attitude. Don't care because that is silly. I sometimes I, wish I I'm wasn't like- such a rule follower. Cause we have this like no more than three unexcused absences yep. thing. Yeah. And even the teachers are kind of like, Oh, they'll make it up. And, and yeah. even friends that work more closely with the school system are like, Hmm, 
mm, it's like it's not a big deal it's but it's not and our school system is five i think it's, five, it's either five or six parent notes right and then there's like so excused absences and there's there's like five unexcused absences so what is an excused absence anything. like because a parent can write a note for anything and really it's an excuse in our county okay so as long as there's a parent note on file yeah my problem is there's this rule Okay, yeah. you know how I remember saying, <laughs> there's this rule. It's like a yeah. three-day rule. You have to turn that letter in within three days. Well, oh. let me tell you how this goes. We go to the orthodontist. Ava goes in by herself because uh. she is now almost 14. So she'll go in. I'll sit in the car and work. She will come back. She will have forgotten to get a letter. Mm -hmm. Or she will have gotten the letter. And somehow between us leaving the orthodontist and her getting to school, she has misplaced the letter. Oh, no. Or the, mis the letter's like in her book bag. And yeah. It's all covered in water from her water bottle that's leaking, right? Or something. So then I'm responsible for getting a new letter. So I have to like call them and they'll be like, oh, I'll email you one. I'll email you a letter or I'll send it to your phone or whatever. So then I have to go and print said letter, right? So now we're on day two by the time all this happens and someone's returned my call. Yeah. So I, I go in to print the letter on Adrian's printer and of course the ink is out. So then I have to go to Staples and I have to buy new ink. <laughs> So my whole a lot thing. Of work. Don't they happens. have like just an online portal where yes, you can click? Yes, they actually do. It's much easier than I'm making it out to be. But the reality is if they want the actual letter, like after the parent excuses are gone, the three day rule is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So, I wrote like a little post-it note and signed it. And yeah. Signed and that works for like the first five. Right. So and the problem is we travel with our kids at least twice during the fall for like we'll take them out of school for like a day here or two days here. Yeah. So I go through those usually in the first semester. But back to Mason, this is totally not what this episode is about. However, when Mason was in kindergarten and I was having all of those postpartum issues. issues, he was late five times. And our school's policy was after the fifth time, you get lunch detention. That's not fair. Well, I thought not either. So I called the school board. I called the principal. I, I called this. the assistant principal. And I was like, here's the deal. You don't want to see what happens if you punish my child for something they don't control. You punish my high schooler because they're late to school because they go through Starbucks and they take a, like 15 minutes extra getting to school. That's on them. But my child no sooner controls what time he gets to school than he does whether or not he's vaccinated. Yeah. Totally outside of his control. Yeah. So I was like, we need to change this policy. We actually changed it at our school. We just have not yet gotten it changed district wide. But I, I think that most of the schools in our district are doing a new thing where it's just like after five, you have a phone call with the parent because they should never. I mean, it's. A, a school that punishes a kindergartner by pulling them out of class yeah. and having them sit with a principal during lunch, even though most of the I kids, feel like Rad would be, be fair, that cool. <laughs> and, that, and that's what I will say, because our administration at our school is spectacular. I love yeah. all of them. Yeah. Um, but and that's that's sort of the joke is they all actually think it's, it's like actually it's actually a prize. Thing. I'm pretty sure our school auctions yeah. off I know. dates lunch with the principal. principal. Yeah. 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 They bring you McDonald's or something. Yeah. Fun. Anyway. And then like Ava, you know, Adrian took her to interview Walker Hayes because she's a huge Walker Hayes fan. And during COVID, he couldn't bring anyone with him in the studio. So he like gave her a little shout out and she was so happy. Now that COVID is behind us, she went in with him and she missed it that was so morning. so cute. But it was like, I told the principal, this is more important important and she, it's a life experience like, i agree it's more important she's excused and i'm yeah. like that's the kind of that's the kind of thing it's like that's why these like overreaching policies that are designed to like keep people in line to me it's like deal with the people who are breaking the policy constantly because they are yeah. doing drugs at home because they are like really neglectful parents that's what the policy is in place for so deal with the like people who are actually Where it's taking, actually a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I was gone for weeks at a time when I was a kid yeah. because I was doing a TV show. And a absolutely. We had very wise school administrators who saw how valuable those those trips were, the world travel, mm -hmm. the the seeing once in a lifetime sort of things oh, yeah. over. Oh, but I still had to. You had stay to learn. Up. I six still plus had six to. Six is twelve. Yeah, and I had to cut. I would cut chunks out of my textbooks yeah. and take them with me and stay up to. I usually ended up ahead. Yeah on my work because yeah. you know I, I it was just a guideline um but yeah that's actually good to hear because I tend to be such a rule follower that so we had a trip planned for during our spring break mm -hmm. and we were going to go to Breckenridge for a full week but Ty was supposed to have a work trip uh, so I kind of surprised him with this trip then that, then he was like I'm so sorry we have to reschedule, have to reschedule. <laughs> and I had very purposefully made everything changeable because mm -hmm. I just knew that could be an issue. But I was coordinating with some friends of ours that live in Denver. So we moved the whole thing. So now they can only come for one night instead oh, of most of the time. Bummer. And our trip's five days instead of seven. Mm -hmm. Then the work trip got canceled, of course. But the work trip was supposed to be over spring break. And I felt really good about Rad missing all of those days. Yeah. 
And now we're going this week into Breckenridge, yeah. which P.S. I am not an amazing snowboarder, but I love the experience, yeah. like the I village, the town. The That's what I'm like. Awesome. Oh, I need a girlfriend with oh, me. Now. I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't care if I get two runs in and oh, then go have next a year, We should go skiing with you over spring break. That would be super fun. Oh my fun. gosh. I want to put my have you been school. to Breckenridge? No, but we've been to Adrian. And I used to go to Aspen a lot and we've had our kids at like Massanutten and, um, Camelback. Is it Camelback? Like the big yeah. Poconos. Like, so we've had them skiing, yeah. but it's been five years. Yeah. You know, I would well, love it's to getting that. to be fun because now the kids are starting to learn to mm-hmm. snowboard and Ty's heart's a little broken because Bash kind of wants to try Ski. skiing. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, but the kids are going to be in lessons at Breck. And I just, I'm so excited about it that I wish we had the couple extra days to actually just chill. You should just take them. And, and I honestly, I say this because I have never met anyone in my whole life that's like, I wish I had not taken my kid out of school for something ever. Never once. And if you if you are someone, please like comment and correct me because I've never met anyone. My neighbor who you've met, um, she has kids in two different schools and they're in two different school districts because one of them is in private school and the other is in school in Wilson County. And they have two different spring breaks. It's mm. the week of the 6th and then the week of like the 12th or whatever, yeah. right? The 13th. So um, she's having to take both her kids out of school for a week. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be gone for two weeks. Yeah. It's like, what else do you do? But I mean, they each only miss one week of right. school. So it's like, it, it's so much better. It's like they get this like great long vacation. But yeah, I mean, it's like you kind of got to do what you got to do. Well, we are taking him out. So yeah. he'll miss three days of school. Mm-hmm. So to me, I'm like, he can't miss anything else. And he has. But then spring break week, now we have nothing planned. Yeah. And I always have these grand plans to like, okay, well, if the little ones, my little ones go to a Montessori school where they'll, on spring break week, you can put them in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And they're out of school Thursday, Friday. Just the first three days. They're just open. the first three days. Okay. So my thought is I could go take Rad to do stuff. Yeah. Just me and him yeah. during that time. And we have no other travel plans later that week. And now for me to take off and Ty to take off, mm-hmm. sometimes it is... Hard. Just more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, I agree. But I love getting out of town because then I'm vacation mom. Mm-hmm. I'm not mom who's worried about how much laundry needs to be done or who needs to run up to the studio to record another, you know, voiceover thing. I am so much more yes. present with my kids. I wake up, I'll take them out of the, like if there's a little place to wander, I'll take mm-hmm. them out with me to get coffee and find something fun to do. And I'm just such a that. more fun. My sister, I think is the one who first started being like, oh yeah, vacation mom. Vacation mom's awesome. Vacation mom just randomly plays games in the or middle of like the floor. like ice cream sundaes for dinner. Yeah, just in, like uh, at any random time, yeah. it's almost like you're like playing the what is it? It's uh, yes day. Yeah. Where you're like, yeah, what do you want to do? Let's do it. And so the getting out of town of it all is what I love. Even but though the it process gets, of setting that up is like the logistics it's are crazy for a family of five. The expense and the logistics yeah. are insane. The more you How do, do you it, guys though, do it with four. Well, and that's what I was going to say. The more you do it, the, though, the more it becomes very second nature. And the reality is when we moved to D.C. from L.A., I remember the longest road trip we had done in six hours. And that was from LA to San Francisco. We did that a lot, actually. Because, you know, we shared dogs with my ex husbands. So we would like drive up to San Francisco and I didn't and realize switch them off. that. Yeah. It was, I mean, it wasn't that often, but right. it was, it was, yeah, it was like we went up to San Francisco a lot. So um, when we moved to DC, I remember my mom saying, oh my gosh, this is so great. Now you guys can like drive to us. And I'm thinking to myself, wait, how long is hey, nine hours? 12. 12. I'm like, DC to Atlanta is 12 hours on a good day, right? 12 hours. So I'm like, yeesh, 12 hours. We will never do a 12 hour road trip. And I was serious, right? But I hadn't really factored in, you know, flights for three kids at the time. Or I guess, when did I have Mason? Two kids you, at the time. But yeah. then very shortly thereafter, a third kid. three kids. And we started doing 12 hour road trips. And the, the sort of really hard part was the year that Olivia was killed, my niece was killed very tragically, was the year that we moved to DC. And so we had this almost like need to be down there. And we yeah. probably went down there for, and I mean, for weekends. Yeah. Once a month. So we would drive on like a Thursday night late and get there Friday and be there Friday, Saturday and come home Sunday night. And I'd go to work Monday Oof. morning. It was brutal. But we did that a lot. We probably did that. If I had to guess over the years we lived there, we lived in DC for five years. We probably did that 50 times. 
Wow. Yeah. So you got really, because I feel like your family is great, great at, at road trips. I mean, there's, and road trips are like, to me, it is all about the preparation. You, and, and it's also like not just the physical preparation, but it's the mental preparation for your kids. Like we're going to be in the car for a long time. We're not going to stop very often. And we're not going to stop very often because it's going to make that car trip even longer. Now, my sister has the polar opposite. She's like, we stop, we have fun, we play. And I'm like, I understand that, but a 12 hour road trip doesn't need to turn into a 17 hour road trip. Yeah. You know, just because we want to stop. Well, stopping times. to play for 10 minutes is different, is different than, than stopping for like to sit down and have lunch. Not that she does this, but to like sit down and have lunch somewhere. Or like to, we, we don't get out of the car just for the sake of doing that. We usually will stop at like a books a million and grab books or you know, each kid will get a book or, you know, we'll, we'll stop at Cracker Barrel. They can buy candy. You know, that's just a, it's an easy, there's lots of things like that that we do, but I got, I kind of learned very early on my mom, when I was little, um, we used to take these road trips to Key West. This is where my both love and absolute, like despising the 12. Yes. Thank you. The 12 hour road trip was born because my mom and dad, when we were all little used to take us in a Volkswagen van again, which is like a huge, you know, like Volkswagen van. Yeah. But it had no AC and they used oh, to take no. us on a road trip from Atlanta to Key West. Okay, that's How a long, long 12 that? hours. It's a long drive. And my mom was the best at road trips. She would buy us toys and every, it, it varied. It would be either every hour, every two hours, she would hand us like, I got a My Little Pony. And like, it was insane. Like, I'll never forget that My Little Pony because it was such a cool gift at the time, right? So she would like give us these little toys. It was incentive. It was incentive to like be good, not fight. And also just know that very quickly there's a, like there's something coming because that 12 hours is so overwhelming to a kid. They yeah. can't, they can't understand it. Um, so we do that. And what I did was I would pack boxes for my kids and they're just like those sterilite, like, you know, shoe boxes basically. And I put kids names each on the top and they could use it sort of as a tray. Um, but it would be like markers, crayons, you know, some of the like water, you know, art sets. And then I would put all their like favorite snack foods and, you know, whatever each kid's was. It was like Pringles or Goldfish or like whatever you love. And then toys. And my kids were always really into those blind bags or blind boxes, mm -hmm. you know, that were like, what's in this thing? You don't yeah. know until you open it. So I would buy like four or five little toys. So for the most part, I would hand them the box and just let them have fun with it if it was like a six hour road trip. But if it was a 12, I would pull the toys out and just give them the like snacks and art supplies and like slime. And I would buy those little, you know, dollar. You let them have slime in the car. Yeah, but we have the weather tech mats. We've always had weather tech mats. Okay. So like, there's nothing they could really get it on. Yeah. And it was not like the goopy slime. It was like Play-Doh slime. You yeah. Know, like. Um, and then I buy those those window clings from Target oh. and then they could use them on the windows. So there were lots of little things that I did, you know, during road trips that made it like palatable. But the one thing I will say, I, I would never impose screen time on my kids in the car unless they were feeling sick from looking at it, you know, like, oh. I, it's like, I know parents that are like, you can only use it for an hour. So choose your hour wisely. Well, oh, so you don't limit it. No, while I do not limit it. They can use it as much as they want. I have always asked my kids to read at some point while we're in the car. Um, but I don't, I don't limit that stuff. I'm like, you want to yeah. binge all of stranger things? You go right ahead. You have at it. Like that'll make it go by. Cause yeah. I would have loved that if I was a kid, like to just get in the car with my blanket mm -hmm. and be able to go. And the last thing I will say, that's like my, my other thing is, I've learned that the earlier you leave in the morning, the easier the drive is. Hmm. Because if you can get your butt up at yeah. four o'clock in the morning, which sounds crazy. And, and we know how my husband feels about early mornings. God, if He'd you can much rather drag leave late at night. out of bed. Yeah. Yes, or late at night. I have two opinions on this. But if you can get him yeah. out of bed at four o'clock in the morning and you're on the road by 430, by the time the kids really wake up at like 730. You're halfway they're, they're, there. Yeah, you're three hours into your trip and it feels so fast. Yeah. Because there are people, right, that'll drive. They'll take a, a 10 hour road trip because we do, it's like 10, 11 hours from Nashville to Philly. Mm -hmm. And we've done that three times this past year, right? Yeah. So my mom's like, why don't you break that up? And I'm like, so I can have two, like, because it'll wind up being six hour travel days. Like, why would I do that to myself? That's two right. long Not days of travel and then trucking everything into the hotel. Not yeah. fun. Yeah. So, so yeah, the early time. I, and I've always felt like the early time is actually better than the late hours because I feel like when you start a trip at like six, seven o'clock at night, you're, you're driving through the bar closing time, which yeah. always to me, 11 o'clock to two o'clock is just this really scary time to be on the road. 
Yeah. And that's that's my thing. It feels more tiring for it to be dark to me. Yeah. But I, I part of that's my vision. Screen. Yeah, and like well, just yeah, I don't have, I'm nearsighted and so yeah. I think part of being nearsighted is like your night vision is yeah. compromised when you're driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and we we did those road trips when I was a kid. Yeah. We, but at the time, the safety rules for being in the car were much different. Oh, yeah. So I just remember us like putting, putting down the, the seats, seats down. and we would just basically have our sleeping bags yes. and we would just full on sleep and we didn't have iPads or anything, but it was we would much read easier. and have toys and snacks and you could get so comfortable. Mm-hmm. And then I also remember it being a tradition for us to listen to books on tape. Oh, I love those. And uh, now I've started to do some audiobooks because Ty doesn't really care that much about audiobooks. Uh-huh. He likes podcasts, but um, we do podcasting. It, it yeah. obviously does comedy. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. when there's the, you know, serialized podcast, it's a great mm-hmm. time to listen to them. But we have only recently done a couple of road trips that were six, seven hours. And it was yeah. like going to Destin. Oh, and yeah. my kids are like, what is happening? I know. But two of them are kind of too little to, once, once they read on screens, it's so easy yeah. because it just flies by. And we do the same thing where we're like, we tell Radley, who's nine, you need to read for an hour. Yeah. And um, just to change, honestly, the reading for me, as much as it is about just changing it up, it's like, yeah. I think they tend to get really car sick when they stare at something like that. And I know a book is staring at something, but it's different. It's like you. Yeah. It's just. A, it, yeah. So I don't it's know. different. Yeah. Yeah. And but we we have to fly a lot of places mm-hmm. because. Like, for instance, my in-laws and my husband's side of the family are all in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yeah. And now I haven't looked up how long that drive is. We actually should look it up because you might be like, you could totally drive. Hold on. We're going to look it up right now. I know. I'm curious. Because his family has done, his parents have done their drive in their camper Mm -hmm. um, several times. Oh, Jesus. 13 and a half hours. That and means, that's not stopping. By the way, that is what DC to Orlando was. Okay. And we did that wow. once. It was horrifying. Yeah, it's it was horrifying. too it's long, especially it. with Teddy's not old enough to even care really about. We have the little TVs in our car. Like, mm-hmm. she has to be turned rear facing. Yeah. So then she feels like she's missing out on something. Um, and she'll nap a little bit, but it, it's really tricky. So we have gotten really good with flying. flying. Yeah. And. We had, did I ever talk about when we were stuck on the plane for six hours before we took off? Well, I don't think we actually talked about I it. I don't think we did either. Ugh. Um, And I have still not heard from that airline, by the way. Oh my and goodness. we had another travel issue with them more recently. But it made me realize we could probably do a trip to London because that would be you like eight could. hours. Yeah. And we were on there for seven and a half. So well, that's good to know. I feel like flying is always great if the amount of time that you're going to be in a car. All in. Because like if you think about like getting to the airport, driving to the airport, parking, getting in, going through security, making enough time, going to the bathroom, getting on the plane, all of it. If that amount of time is less than the drive and the money. Well, yeah, like Atlanta, weighs, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Because by the time you have to get to the airport, yep. park, be there ahead of the flight. Get your like. Like I'm not even sure it would make three sense and a half, for four Destin. Hours. Like Kayla yeah. kept saying to me this week, "Fly down, fly down, fly down. Come on, just fly yeah. down." And I was kind of like, oh, "Maybe I will fly down." But the reality is, the the drive is like literally. Destin's on the bubble. For it me. is. It's it's, it's right a little there. on the bubble. Uh, it's where, kind of a boring drive, so it's hard. Yeah, that's that's and, the other part. And yeah, so I I get the Destin thing. Yeah. That gets we got stuck in some traffic on our way to Destin, and so it was more like seven eight hours instead yeah. of the six or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but we've gotten pretty good at flying with our kids, which now, you know, flying a family of five is not, not cheap. It is not cheap. Mm-mm. Uh, and so sometimes we do end up just having to do the more like budget airlines, yeah. which then we run, we've run into so many issues, but I've had, and I've heard you talk about this, but I've had issues on the big airlines, United and Delta. I do think it's just a phase that, yeah. that, that it, travel is not what it once no. was. Flights get changed, canceled, delayed. It, it happens constantly. Yeah. So that's when I'm like, eh. but I have, I started traveling with Radley. I, he flew like 20 some odd flights his first year. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that you were saying like, they just get whatever screen time, whatever snacks, because I feel like one of my biggest travel tips for parents flying with kids would be more of an anything goes mentality yep. uh, where things they don't normally get to eat. They get to eat. Like usually they're grabbing huge bags of like, Cheeses and not that Cheez-Its are like no, awful, but, but like, like a M&Ms, thing of Rad had a thing of like Swedish fish mm. or whatever. We let them just yep. be on their screens um, and allowing extra time, which is tricky because Ty likes to be able to if he can't walk on the plane mm-hmm. as soon as we get to the airport, he thinks we're way too early. I know. And I want to be able to get a diaper change. Yeah. Get. Waters Grab a and drink, snacks and get on the plane. I don't want to be there way early. No. Um, But I want to be balance. there enough so that like going through security isn't stressful. So doing all those things, I would highly recommend 
TSA pre and or clear uh. if you are traveling with kids because then like you're not having to take your shoes off. You're not having to take laptops out of your bag. What is that? Okay. Because so, I've never done it. I, I, oh, I mean, I travel. We've traveled with so the kids cross country flights. Like, I mean, maybe only five times. It doesn't matter if you're doing cross country. It's, no, I it's just helpful mean, at Nashville. I just mean for us, like the only yeah. way we would really fly with them is if it was like oh, something that was saying. a little more. So it, it never really was on my radar, but now I'm kind of like, hmm. So if you have any kind of travel credit mm-hmm. card or an Amex, they'll refund really? you the cost of TSA pre. Yeah. Yeah, oh. almost like almost everyone has a credit card yeah, that, that will it. cover it, um, that will reimburse you. So uh-huh. if you charge it, they will give you the credit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually have Global Entry. I got that right before the pandemic happened. Yeah. So that would be more for international travel. And then Clear is is an add on service. When Clear, I think you might be able. Uh, this is not an ad for Clear, by the way. Uh, you might be able to use it even without TSA Pre. But if you have TSA Pre and you have Clear. You don't even have to take anything back out. You can just scan your boarding pass. You don't even have to take your ID out. It scans your eyes or your fingerprint. You come up in the system and they walk you to the very front Mm -hmm. of the TSA line. And then you go in and you don't have to take anything out of your backpack. You don't have to take shoes off. You just go. Yeah. And the kids get to go with you. So oh, that, that seems really nice. Because I've definitely, you know, if you're breaking down a car seat, a yeah. stroller, all those oh, things already, hassle. then the last thing you want to be doing is like, tying and untying your shoes and that's all that stuff. So I would definitely recommend that, especially if you have a travel card yeah. that's going to reimburse you. Um, extra diapers. There is something about the pressure that makes kids have a lot of blowouts. It's crazy. Um, and then I do think that anything goes snack things, but especially if you have a baby, uh, a lot of th- a lot of times I would realize, you know, people probably have heard, oh, have them suck on something on takeoff yeah. and landing. A lot of times when they close the, the door and start to pressurize, mm-hmm. that's when my kids Need would have an issue. To drink yeah, but it can be one of those like go-go squeezies, mm-hmm. a water, uh, which if you take if you take like a camelback, you have to unscrew it oh, if it you're pops. doing it mid-flight because otherwise it will literally shoot water across the airplane. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, I've, had that, I've gotten so funny, soaking I've wet. I've never done that. That's hysterical. Soaking wet on flights. And another thing I would say is to bring a shirt for yourself because – inevitably you're going to have a change of clothes for the baby. They're going to have a blowout or spit up and you're going to have them all changed. And you're going to be like, and of course I have poop on my shirt. I will. I swear to you, the first time I flew from LA to Atlanta with Ava, I was like, got to nurse her on takeoff. And of course I only flew red eyes with my kids yeah. because they would sleep and not all kids will. But yeah. My I don't always think that all works. slept and it was glorious. Right. And so the very first time though, that I flew with her, I was like, I got a nurse her. I got a nurse her. Everyone's getting, you know. So she's in my lap and she like starts to nurse and like we take off and she's just lulled Mm -hmm. to sleep by the jet. But all of a sudden, you know, my boob kind of comes out of her mouth and I'm not paying a lot of attention to it because she's, she's asleep on it. Right. Yeah. But we get to Atlanta and I had never, I had, I had like a muslin blanket on, but I had never like bothered to try and like continue nursing her. Well, apparently because of the pressure of the airplane, my boob had <gasps> soaked. It soaked her. It soaked oh, me. It soaked my no. pants. And the only reason I knew it was happening is because it started dripping down on my shoes. Oh, no. <laughs> it went on forever. Forever. It was a lot. It was a lot. That's it had impressive. to have been ounces That's of impressive. breast milk. So it was crazy. So anyway, I don't, Suck yeah. on my shoe. Definitely. Suck on my shoe, quick. Don't lose that. No, it's like you, you definitely need the change of something. Well, the flip side of giving yourself extra time is I would also recommend not getting on the plane first. Mm-hmm. Unless you're flying southwest and you need to get do the family boarding right. because you have a sea boarding zone or whatever, why would you want to have children on a plane longer than you have to be yep. on a plane? It's so true. The family boarding, I get that you might need more time. There's always plenty of time. Right. There's always people getting settled, still people getting on. The only bad part is when you don't have storage space for any carry-on stuff. Yeah, but just gate last. check it. Yeah. It is not worth trying to take a baby or children and also yeah. trying to find overhead space. I know. And love. My problem is the only things that I carry on the plane. I mean, obviously, I gate check, like, you know, strollers and, and cars. Not even, car, not even car yeah. seats anymore, but, but strollers. But I, I would, the only reason I wouldn't check something is because I have something valuable in my bag. So then it's like, well, I'm not going to gate check it. So it, yeah, I don't know. I've always needed the overhead space. Although, I flew to Philly to be with my girlfriends. Um, and it was just me and it was like Monday to Wednesday Mm -hmm. and I show up at B and a, I get a Starbucks and I look down and I have 
like one backpack for two days. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else. I have one backpack. Yeah. I have just the tiniest little wallet. I have my phone. I had the clothes I had on and then like two changes of clothes and a pair of yoga pants and a tank top. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what it's traveling without kids is like. It it's was the great. Best. Because I'm not typically an overpacker for myself unless we're going somewhere like a. I used to be. I can't be yeah, anymore. Yeah, no, exactly. But if we're going somewhere that's like a, a a podcast trip or something where it's like I need multiple changes of clothes. I need a lot of stuff. Fine. But I hate being like saddled down with luggage. I've gotten to where I started underpacking so much mm. because I was packing so much stuff for the kids yeah. that now I actually underpack. You. I'm like, oh, crap. It's crazy. Like, I don't have a clean shirt, which then I guess I get to go shopping because my husband, it's when he's forgotten things, like he forgot all his outfit for a wedding one time. Of course he did. So he got to go shopping. He bought And I'm shoes. like, dang it. I need to remember to forget stuff. <laughs> I need stuff to pull that next time. So that I can go shopping. That's awesome. Yeah. Jeez. But I, I think one mistake parents can make in trying to take all the things you might need on a yeah. plane is then, haven't you seen the parents who have like, Diaper bag, da da da, a baby, a carrier, a, oh, all the it's things. Miserable. And when you have so much stuff, you're so bogged down. So I think it's about like the bare minimum yes. that you actually need: extra diapers, plenty of wipes, an extra shirt for you and the baby, something for them to eat, something for them to suck on. And then if you have older kids and you're doing a really long flight, mm -hmm. same thing: like dollar store toys. Yes. Hey, here's a toy you've never seen before that you're gonna play with. I love like Roblox iPads. gift cards and things like that because my kids, I don't buy those for them. But if we're going somewhere, I'm like, here's a $25 Roblox gift card. They think they have died. See, then I would have to buy the Wi-Fi on the plane for them to upload oh, it. So we yeah. usually don't let our kids do that. Yeah. But now the boys are so easy because they just watch iPads. Yes. There is a no man's land between the time a child can walk and when they're about two and a half or three and actually mm. care about headphones and an iPad, where it's just like, really Teddy's difficult to travel. There, right? No, she's there. She will be there. Oh, okay, she's good. already there. I was going to say, because you'll be in heaven once that's like, woo. She, uh, she will maybe maybe watch Mickey for mm -hmm. five or ten minutes. Nice. But her attention span is very short. So we are wrangling her on a plane. Mm -hmm. Because she, I mean, it's a nice phase where they don't care about a screen as much. Yeah. But at the same time, it's impossible to occupy kids who are in that range. Oh. It's easy to travel with rare, very small babies. It really is. And I mean, I think they mostly is. sleep. It's very easy. It's totally worth it. And then when they're in that like 18 months starts to be a nightmare. Yeah. They, 18 months or three years. Just oh, yeah. It's a hard, it's the longest. That's the longest time. Well, Teddy is now oh. in her own seat. So we can put her in one of those cares harnesses, which yep. kind of locks her in. So that helps. Um, but I definitely found myself with all the kids on. We had, we had basically middle seat, aisle seat, middle aisle window. Uh -huh. And Ty was sitting on the other side with Teddy in the middle. And then I was sitting with the boys on the other side. But Teddy was like, I want to sit in mama's lap. I want mama's lap. So I just ended up with all the kids on my side while Ty, like, watched a show. And I was so like, like, dang his nails, it. Like, eating the charcuterie it. board. But at the same time, Jeez. she was freaking out. And so she was either freaking out or she was just, like, sitting on my lap. So. Ugh. But, yeah, I think the main thing, I was just talking to uh, a dad who, they're a family of five as well. And I think the number one travel tip with kids would be to lower your expectations. Mm -hmm. Don't assume it's going to go smoothly. Don't assume you're not going to lose your crap, shit, whatever. Don't assume you're not going to have kids melting down. Right. Whether it's because of a sugar crash or you're overtired because you were on a red-eye flight or whatever the case. So if you just have really low expectations, and Ty said, and then those expectations will be met. And then lower those <laughs> even more. You know what's funny? It's, so we had Dr. Jessica Griffin from uh, Married at First Sight on the podcast a couple weeks ago. And remember, that was her thing, too, where she was like, remember how your life was before kids? Forget that. Your that life, life is, is over. Dead. That life is over. I'm like, that's the same thing. The same thing holds true for traveling with kids. It's like yeah. the way that you sort of kind of relax the days ago in the airport and like having a drink at a bar. It's like those days are gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're over. You uh, just have to hope that whatever the trip on the other side is worth it. Is worth it. And it's always worth it. I really think. Yeah. Even if you're visiting family, it's like, it's it's awesome. I said something to my dad the other day, and I was like, I need to remember my own advice when this comes up. <laughs> I was talking about, he always just goes like, oh my gosh, your life is so busy. And it is. We're in yeah. a busy life phase. And I'm like, oh, dad, I'm tired. And then we're going up to the, on this trip and then on this trip. And he's like oh my gosh, you're already tired and then you're going to be exhausted. I'm like, dad, we're tired all the time anyway. We might as well be... Be tired in some place awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. And then the crazy thing is that even if, even if you're losing your shit, the kids are melting down, you know, you're having all these issues, 
you still only remember the good parts. Yeah. It's just like childbirth. It's like childbirth. <laughs> Where you're like, oh my gosh, remember yeah. when we were sitting on that mountain in the snow and blah, blah, blah. I had a great idea. Okay. And we should totally say this on the air. You don't even know what I'm about to say. No, I'm We curious. should talk to Amy Kennedy about it, doing a girl's weekend at her condo in Aspen. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be really fun. I would love that. Do you ski or snowboard? I ski. And okay. I'm like a decent skier. And wait, Kayla. Skis I don't her. know. Well, she also had her ankle surgery, so she'll be, well, she she'll won't be in be for the abrisky. Abrisky. She'll be in the hot tub. Yeah. Abrisky, oh, hot tub. I'm Lord. down for that. That's my favorite part. I'm down for part. a couple I, runs, I, a, yeah, a, a couple massage, runs and a, and then, yes. a meal. And... Sounds so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Amy, let's go skiing. That would be a great yeah. reunion weekend. That would be so much fun. Honestly, like a girl's trip to any ski town oh, yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. That'd be, and Because we care so list. little about the ski. Let's put that on our list. There, I know we can do that. I know we can do that in the next two months. In the next two months, yeah, yeah. yeah. How are we going to carve the time? We're going to we're oh going to prioritize. Ty will kill me if I go I'm gonna on a snowboard trip without it, and I'm going to make but you it know what? happen. Amy Kennedy is like a badass <laughs> snowboarder. I know I can't go with her. She's like double blacks, <laughs> and I'm like, I'll see you at the bottom of the green Bye. in four hours. <laughs> okay, well, those are our tips for <laughs> road fun. tripping slash. There flying. was so much we covered a lot in that. What I minutes? feel like I, I probably have a lot more tips for flying with we kids. We do, but this but was a really good starter pack. Yeah, and yeah. If you have we, questions, we let up. us know. I feel like we both traveled with our kids a ton. Mm -hmm. um, it's never easy, but it's always worth it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, cheers. See cheers. you guys next time. The Hi My Name Is Mom Studio is brought to you by the Yard Sale Store. Check them out at yardsalestore.com and on socials at Yard Sale USA.